Hi everyone, Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros. You're joining me again today at Portsmouth Golf Centre as we do a head-to-head -head battle between two of the most popular irons available on the market today, the Titleist T350 and the Titleist T200. If you're a golfer who's not sure which one of these irons you need, the Game Improvement T350 or the Player's Distance T200, well, I'm an average swing speed, mid-handicap golfer, and today I'm gonna to hit a batch of shots with both of these golf clubs, talk you through all of the Trackland data, including a side-by-side -side comparison at the end to hopefully help you make up your mind on which of these irons is the right one for you. Now before we start hitting shots, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the features and benefits of these two irons because there's plenty of other reviews out on YouTube where they've been out for a year or so now. But what I do want to call out is just a couple of differences in how they look when you've got them down side by side. When we look at them at a dress, what we can definitely see is the T200 is just an overall smaller, sleeker looking profile. The blade length isn't as long. That top line still has a bit of thickness to it, typical of a player's distance iron, but it's nowhere near as thick and as chunky as that T350. In terms of offset, both have got a little bit of offset but the T350's got a little bit more and the overall package when you just look at them down at addresses the T350 just looks like the bigger chunkier brother of that T200. When we turn them both over that you can see that continues in the sole design as well that T200 has got a nice little bit of sole profile to it helping you with a little bit of forgiveness but the chunkiness and the thickness of that sole on that T350 just inspires confidence that whether you catch it fat or thin you are still going to get some really good performance out of these irons and that is the difference between them that T350 we're expecting to see maximum forgiveness with some really good performance whereas that T200 we're expecting to see some really good numbers at the player's distance the golfer that's maybe of a mid handicap or a higher handicap trying to work their way down who's got some good ball striking will benefit from. A couple of other things to call out just before we start hitting shots is the lofts of these two seven irons. The Titleist T350 is a 29 degree seven iron. And that's because the, the overall profile of the iron with that slightly chunkier shape allows Titleist to put the center of gravity down and further back, more like you would see within a hybrid. And that allows them to maximize the launch of the pop and the height of these irons. And therefore that allows them to give you a slightly stronger loft versus 30.5 in the T200, which is really typical of a player's distance iron in 2024. Final thing to call out is the set makeups. They both start at a four iron and they go up to gap wedge, but with the T350, because of those slightly stronger lofts, you've also got the benefit of an additional wedge beyond the gap wedge if you wanna have that matching your set as well. Right, I think there's nothing else to tell you. The only thing to call out is the way we're gonna do this test is hit a batch of shots with both. We have got the AMT red shaft, which I'm putting in both of the heads today to try and make the test as consistent as possible. The reason I picked that shaft is it's one of the stock options. And when I had my previous set of Titleist irons a couple of years ago, that was the shaft that I had in them. So I know it works really, really well for me. It's gonna give me the best chance of getting good numbers out of both of these golf clubs. Right, let's set up the test and start hitting shots with that T350. There we go, there's a golf shot. Wowzers. There we go, so I've caught that even a tiny bit thin actually, quite low on the face, but 107.6 mile an hour of ball speed, to uh, carrying at 154.4, totaling at 166.6, spinning at 4465, launching at 19, peak height of 77 feet, and land angle of 42.7. That's unreal. Felt like I caught it right out the middle, but it's still a fraction towards the toe. But again, look at the consistency of this, 107 mile an hour of ball speed again, carried at 155.7 again, spinning at 4066, and maybe a tad lower on the spin that time, launching at 20.2, peak height 81, launch angle 43.4. Again, what I would expect these irons to do, super forgiving with some really good distance, but potentially at the sacrifice of a little bit of spin and that little bit of stopping power. But if you're the sort of golfer that's looking at gaming these, that's probably not something you've got a lot of anyway. And therefore this could still help improve that for you ever so slightly. Just close that one down ever so slightly. 110 mile an hour ball speed, carrying at 156.5 because I've just pulled it down the right. We've seen that number jump up a little bit. Spin there, really interesting at 4901. That's really high spin for an iron like this. And that wasn't something I was expecting to see out of them, let alone off of something I've pulled. Launching at 18.2 and it still went for a pull, 78 feet of peak height. I think that's really, really impressive. And it was still out the toe ever so slightly. Caught that one a fraction clean as well, but it just feels like the ball flight is on repeat. And again, that is what I think these irons are gonna do for people. Make golf really, really easy. Yes, the sole's a little bit chunky. Yes, the top line's a little bit chunky, 
But if you want a golf club that's really easy to hit and you want to play a tight list, this is the golf club for so many golfers, I think. Ball speed 109.3, carrying at 153.9, totaling 164, spin rate of 5193, launch angle of 17.3, peak height 74 feet, land angle 42.6. It's just so easy to hit. And the one thing I can't get over so far is just how consistent those numbers are in terms of the distance. 109.6 of ball speed, carrying at 155.9, totaling 167.3, 4885 of spin, launching at 18 degrees, peak height again, like the, the ball flight on these launch, the peak heights and the land angles. I really can't wait to show you these side on in a bit because they're so, so consistent. that I think a little bit out the toe. It'll be really interesting to see. Like I say, it's sometimes hard with how these feel to tell where that strike location is, which again, I think that's a confidence inspiring thing for a lot of golfers. Yeah, so 107 mile an hour ball speed, carried 151, totaled 162, spinning at 4819, launch peak height, land out, all very, very similar. And that's off of a low toe strike. Again. Catching these just a fraction fin, I'm just coming out of them a little bit early, but it's just getting away with them. You can see that there from the strike location, 107 of ball speed, carrying at 151.5, total 164. That spin again, so consistent in the high four sixes. That launch and land, a peak height a little bit lower this time, but nothing that concerns me. Such a shame, just started that one down the right hand side just close the face down ever so slightly, but caught it a little bit higher. And look at that jump up in ball speed, gone up to a 111. The carry, because it's a pull, has gone to 160, totaling 174. Spin has dropped a tiny bit there to four threes. Launch, peak height, land angle, all very, very similar. Right, one more with this, and we'll swap over to the T200, I think. Determined not to pull that one down the Right hand side, I've just left the face ever so slightly open there, but it's done exactly what I would expect it to do. Caught it a little bit higher on the face, what you wanted to, and we've got the extra bit of spin there because I've left the face open. And as a result, the carry's dropped a little bit to 149. Ball speed at 107, spinning at 5292. Everything there, launch, peak height, land angle, have all jumped up a little bit. So hopefully that demonstrates just how consistent, easy to hit, forgiving the Titleist T350 are. Oh, what we're gonna do now is keep the same shaft, change the head over and just see what happens in the T200. So I've unfortunately just pulled that one massively down the right, but first thing you could see straight away is it definitely wanted to launch and go higher. Now we have got 1.5 degrees additional loft here on this club versus the T350. So expectation would be good hit for good hit. It might just go a fraction shorter, but would expect it to have a bit more spin and stop a bit quicker. And we can see that straight away here. Look at that one, I know it's a massive pull. It's carried 156. And it's spun at 465, uh, 4683, which would be definitely higher end of the spin than what we saw from the 350s. But you can see there, even on a massive pull, the peak height has jumped above 80 feet straight away. You've got a little bit more land angle and therefore just a little bit more control. So if you've got the ability to hit this a little bit more out of the middle and control it, you should just get a little bit more control than that T350, but you might just give up a bit of forgiveness. And then you hit one out the middle and it feels absolutely awesome. You get a little bit more of a softer feel, a little bit more feedback out of it. It feels great when you hit a good golf shot. And as you can see there, the ball speed then jumps up as good as we saw with the 350 to 110.3. The carry number's as good. We've got one, uh, 5089 of spin. It stopped a little bit quicker and that peak height of 88 feet is substantially higher. We've maintained the distance even with more spin and more height, despite having also more loft on the club. And that's two in a row that have felt absolutely great. And all of a sudden you get a bit of confidence with it and you see a ball speed that's very, very similar at 110 again. You see a spin rate that's 5066 again, two in the 5000s back to back, carrying at 156 again. And then you start to see consistency of ball speeds. You see consistency of launch heights, land angles on those good strikes. And it's just giving you a little bit more that the good player will wanna see. But again, you've just gotta make sure you do deliver it right. It's launching so high for a seven iron, absolutely launching high, going really high. 
Really, really liking the combination that I'm seeing here. Again, three in a row where that ball speed, 110. The carry number has been almost identical three in a row. Spin that time has jumped up to 5.375, the highest spin that we've seen. And again, that peak height of 89 feet. It just wants to stay in the air, this golf club. Even that one there then, that's when we then show you the other side. Build up a bit of confidence with it, felt like it was gonna be on repeat. Didn't catch it that great, just shut the face down massively. But again, we've still seen ball speeds, carry numbers, spin rates, all very, very similar. The peak height has stayed up, but it just don't get that forgiveness of it in terms of where it goes. That's incredible. I just can't believe how high that golf club is going. That might be 90 feet. Oh, it is. Unreal, that is. 108 of ball speed. Carrying at 154, totaling at 163, spinning at 48, so the lowest spin we've probably had, but it's still higher than we were getting out of that 350. But look at that peak height, 94 feet of it. That's absolutely unreal. Now that really is interesting because I've definitely caught that one a little bit thin. I'm sure the face location will show that, the impact location will show that. But it was centered still. We've still got 110 of ball speed. We still carried it 155. We've got that little bit more spin because it was a slightly thin strike at 5343. But we've got that height still off of a thin, which is just incredible. Right, one more to finish on. I think we've got the two points illustrated here really, really well. So let's just hit one more to finish on because I'm just enjoying hitting it. That might be my favorite one yet. It's just down the pipe. Really, really nice golf shot. Ball speed 108, carrying 151.3, totaling 160, 5450 spin. Again, another one over 80 feet with that high launch and that high land angle. You know me, I always talk about getting a seven iron to 45 degree of land angle. Just gives me so much stopping power at my speed. And that's off a shot that's gone fractionally out the toe as well. Right, done hitting shots with the Titleist T350 and the Titleist T200. What we're gonna do now is go home and we'll look at all of that TrackMan data side by side, both batches of shots, and we'll pick out the differences in the numbers to hopefully help you make that decision on which one of these irons is the right one for you. Let's go home and let's do that now. Right, let's take a side by side comparison of all that TrackMan data. Starting on the left hand side, you can see that my club head speed was 0.4 mile an hour faster on average with the T200 and the ball speed was 1.1 mile an hour more than the T350. This was due to a slightly better strike location with the T200, which I think is the first indication of the T350 being slightly more forgiving as both irons were very similar speeds despite that. Now just to bring that to life for you, you can see that my strike location was incredibly consistent and just slightly toe side with the T200, whilst the T350 was a little less consistent and favoring the toe side slightly more, which as we look through the rest of the data will further illustrate that greater level of forgiveness that you get from the T350. As we touched on in the bay, it was clear to see the T200 offering more spin, and the data shows that the 5095 RPM was about 10% more spin than the T350. However, it is worth noting that the T350 did offer good spin compared to many other game improvement irons that I test on this channel. It's also a good reminder that we'd expect to see spin rates roughly 1000 RPM more if we were testing out on the grass versus the mat. The main differentiator that I saw in the bay and what impressed me most in the T200 was the strength and consistency of that ball flight. Launch angles were 1.4 degrees higher. We got 10 feet of additional peak height and 3.2 degrees steeper land angle with both the peak height and land angle being above that magic number of 80 feet and 45 degrees that I'm desperately looking for in a seven iron. Again, to bring that to life for you, here's the side on view and it's worth calling out just how consistent both golf clubs were in their ball flight. Now onto those all important distances. The carry distance with both golf clubs was nearly identical, but the T350 did roll out a fraction more due to that lower ball flight and reduced spin, meaning the T200 did offer a fraction more stopping power. The final thing to show you is my shot dispersion. Again, the final example of where the T350 is that fraction more forgiving with my two pulled shots not going as far to the right as they did with the T200. However, the tightness of that front to back dispersion with the T200 really does demonstrate the distance control that those irons offer. And that leads me really nicely into my final thoughts. So based on what we've just seen over the last 15 or so minutes, what that says to me is if you're the golfer looking to maximize the control that you get out of your irons and you want the benefits of a little bit of forgiveness, the T200 is the perfect iron for you. It offers that fraction more spin. It offers a really strong high ball flight with a load of stopping power. And it does offer some really good players distance like the name suggests. 
Equally, if you're the golfer that wants to maximize the forgiveness of your irons, but you still want the benefits of a consistent ball flight, some really strong distance, and good spin rates compared to other game improvement irons on the market, then the T350 will make an absolutely fantastic option for you. And I really do think the way they're made and the way that they perform, you can grow with them probably down to kind of a, a 14 to 18 handicap. And that'll be the point where you maybe want to cross over and look for an iron that offers that fraction more control like the T200. Now, all that's left for me to say is if you like the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. It really does help golfers like you to find my videos on YouTube. And if you're not yet following Weekend Tour Pros, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you ring the bell icon, you'll get notified of all my videos as they land on YouTube every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.